Hello, and welcome to week five of our regathering series this summer, our journey through the book of Philippians. This week we've come to Philippians chapter 2, verse 19, and we'll go into the very beginning of the next chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. It's one of my favorite uh, passages in the New Testament because it deals with uh, two figures, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Uh, these are two people that Paul uh, uses to share with uh, the Philippian church uh, what it looks like to live out what Paul had previously expressed in chapter 2 about following in the footsteps of Christ, having the mindset of Christ within us so that we would live that life of humility, of self-emptying, and, uh, and then subsequently that, that glory. So both Timothy and Epaphroditus exemplify in exciting ways um, what it is Paul is getting after in this book. Um, and so it'll be a brief lesson today, um, but uh, I think it's an exciting message all the same dealing with these two figures. So there's much uh, question about both of these figures, um, particularly when it comes to Epaphroditus. Um, there is very little information about Epaphroditus. Timothy, there's much more, and we'll, we'll get into him uh, to some extent. Uh, but I wanted to use both of these characters, both of these Bible characters to um, delve into the concept of a character study. Uh, this is a, an inductive study where you look at an individual in scripture. Now this could be a major figure like Moses or David or Elijah or Jesus or Paul or Peter. Um, but I also found that in doing character studies, sometimes some of the most effective studies are with some of what we might consider the minor characters, those who only have a few verses associated with them. And what is really fascinating is you can sometimes find that there is uh, a verse or two that are just packed full of information about characters. And so I wanted to present this to you as a way for you yourself to dive more deeply into these character studies. Instead of me um, doing a bunch of analytic study of uh, these characters to give you the opportunity to use an inductive study method to do this. So this may be you uh, working online, maybe you have a concordance or a study Bible where it gives you passages, particularly about Timothy, um, where you could investigate on your own Timothy as a character, and then Epaphroditus as a character, although everything we know about Epaphroditus is pretty much here in Philippians. Um, what kinds of insights, then, do you gain as you look at all of these different verses and passages as they give you insight into the character, the history, the story of the individual? Timothy, I might Add is a rather interesting individual because he shows up in Acts. He, is, he shows up in almost every letter that Paul writes, and there are two letters that Paul wrote directly to Timothy. So even when he himself isn't caught up in the narrative, when he himself isn't a co-author of a book, um, he gets books written to him. Uh, and so that could be something that's added into your own thoughts about the character of Timothy. Well, for my part, one of the things that uh, looking at Timothy and Epaphroditus does is it rounds out my picture of Paul himself. Next week, we'll get into uh, the story of Paul. So we have Jesus in chapter 2 the two examples of Timothy and Epaphroditus, and then Paul will bring himself up, his own story, as another example of this Christward journey of that humility and then exaltation 
journey that uh, is part of Paul's story as well. Um, but an aspect of Paul is that he might be considered the apostle who doesn't work alone. I, I called this Paul and his merry band. Uh, he seems to always have people around him. Uh, these would be journey partners when he's on his missionary journeys. Uh, you might think of Barnabas, the person who was his first discipler. Uh, Mark, um, Timothy, Titus. Uh, there are tons of people who are in and out of his life during his, his journeys. Another interesting thing is if you were to look at the epistolary prescripts of all of Paul's letters, there are hardly any that are solely written by Paul. Romans, for instance, is only written by Paul, and Ephesians in the epistolary prescript, it's only written by Paul. Yet, even in those cases, you have at the end of Ephesians, for instance, Tychicus is commended as a beloved brother and a faithful minister who's going to bring the letter to the church at Ephesus. And in bringing that, it gives you the sense that maybe he had some role in helping create the letter. Was he the amanuensis that did the writing, the physical writing that Paul would have dictated? Uh, if nothing else, Tychicus was right there in the room where it happened. Uh, similarly, Romans, you have these greetings and this commendation of others that are with Paul or who have ministered alongside Paul. And you get this sense that there are men, there are women that are journey partners, they're co-authors with him, there are people who are in his sphere. Um, and I think that's such a model for us to consider. Um, that Paul sometimes strikes us as this uh, lightning rod of individual Christianity. And yet uh, what we see in his journeys, in his letters, is that he is just not a person to go it alone. He works consistently with others. He's constantly commending these other people in their ministry, like he does in this letter with Timothy and Epaphroditus. Well, here's a, a quote that Paul shares about Timothy, and you can see the affection that he has for this young man in the faith. He uh, says of Timothy that he is as a son with a father. He has served with me in the gospel. Their work together, journeying, writing, ministering, suffering, has knit these two people together in such a way in their work for the gospel that it feels like a father and son relationship. And I think that's a, a stunning depiction of the kind of closeness that people can have when they commit to journey with one another in the gospel, when they uh, put all of their intention, all, all that they have in this uh, sense of partnership in the gospel. Similarly, we see uh, Paul's commendation of Epaphroditus. He commends Epaphroditus because he risked his life to complete what was lacking in the Philippian church's service to them. I wanted to bring this up because Paul isn't saying that the Philippians' gift or their their uh, service or prayer or ministry to Paul was in some way inadequate. It was just that they couldn't be physically present with Paul while he was in prison. Um, and so who took on that burden of risking their lives to journey to where Paul was to bring the things that the Philippians would have sent with him? Um, that was Epaphroditus. And so this phrase, what was lacking in your service to me, what was lacking is their ability to actually make that journey with him. And so by proxy, Epaphroditus represents all that that church would have sent and done. And so now Paul sends Epaphroditus back to the Philippian church with his commendation. And he points out that 
he is an example of exactly what he's talking about in that Christ-like service. That he risked his life. He became ill, near to death, in this service to Paul on behalf of the Philippian church. And so with that example, um, he is therefore asking the Philippian church, and we might say asking us as well, to live that sacrificial life. What is it we could do to risk our lives for the gospel, to serve wholeheartedly um, for Christ? So we have this pattern then, and uh, I have this picture of these arches, which are perfect patterns of one another and nested within one another as this uh, shot is framed. Following in Christ's footsteps entails following godly examples. And what Paul does rather deftly, rhetorically, is he lays out the story of Christ, that downward journey followed by his exaltation. And then he says, true followers of Christ follow this pattern, for instance, Timothy, and then for instance, Epaphroditus. And as we'll see next time, for instance, Paul himself. So Timothy and Epaphroditus show us sacrificial partnership in the gospel. This pattern is laid out for you and I to be able to follow in Christ's footsteps. And I believe as we contemplate the stories of Timothy and Epaphroditus. Um, we want to open our own hearts to resonate with the pattern of Christ. What are things that we can do in our daily lives? What, what are things that we may sense God is calling us to in this moment where we can be the hands and feet of the body of Christ? Well, like I said, this is a short, compact message um, centered around these two figures, Timothy and Epaphroditus. Um, we are still meeting regularly. Uh, there will be uh, meetings every other week. Um, we're about halfway through our summer journey through Philippians. So if you want to sign up for the remaining two, you can do so at allsouls.com. There's much more going on beyond just this Philippian series. Uh, there's reading group, there's film group, there's all kinds of things. Uh, not to mention that uh, we are starting services up again, and there will be signups for families to be able to attend um, on a limited basis. So as we are regathering, uh, hopefully there are plenty of these moments where you have that connection with other people in church, um, either physically through our studies at church or virtually online. All right, well, thanks for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. All right, bye-bye.